sometimes feel like I have totally come full circle for my own embroidery journey. So when I was in high school, I had an opportunity to help a teacher who owned an embroidery business. And I thought, well, that would be kind of a fun job during the summer. And so as a sewer, she said, yes, why don't you come work for me? And then we could actually take a couple days off. And you know how small businesses are. I mean, when it's mom and pop, they're always working. They're always there. If the doors are open, it's really hard to take a vacation. So I was like one of their first employees. And I got to learn how to run a commercial embroidery machine at the age of 15, 16, right in there. And with that, I found that it was actually very easy. We embroidered a lot of hats. We embroidered a lot of robes for, with monograms. And the best one we did a lot of is Nordstrom's was right next door. And every day, towards the end of the day, a really nice gentleman would come over, and you know how nicely they're dressed at Nordstrom's, would come over with a stack full of white dress shirts for men to have the monogram added to the cuff. And so it was always nice to see him stop by with his delivery. And then it was my job in between all the other projects that we were running because with commercial embroidery, you only get paid for what you stitch. So if the machine wasn't stitching, nobody was making any money. So again, it was always that constant. Uh, we always had two hoops, if not more, because we were always hooping something while this one was finishing. That's a great little tip, by the way, having two sets of hoops. So you can always be hooping your next project. Um, so what we would do is we would embroider, I would pull up the monogram, look at the ticket, what are the letters, put them in the right order, and then stitch them. And I'll never forget the very first time <laughs> that I started stitching the monogram upside down. So monograms are supposed to be so the other person can read it, not the person wearing it can read it. So I realized right away, I had turned that design 180 degrees the wrong way. So and these are expensive shirts back in the day. And so very carefully, I remember the first time I had to take out the first little part of a letter out of a very expensive piece of fabric. And I got it out, it took some time, but my skills from learning how to sew proved me oh, well. And I got it back out, got it back on the machine, turned it the right way, and finished stitching. I never forgot to test trial that design and look twice before I stitched ever again, because I never wanted to have to do that stitch removal on that kind of fabric. So that was my first experience, and it was great. It, I learned a lot about stabilizer, and I learned a lot about threads, and what you could embroider on. So fast forward a couple years, and the first time I ever put my hands on a home embroidery machine was I was working at a sewing machine store in California, and one of our educators came in and she said, Sarah, she knew I, I love new things, new gadgets and things. She said, Sarah, in the back of my car is one of those new embroidery machines. It was an embroidery only machine, because that's what came out kind of first at that time. And the hoop size was four by four. I mean, that was as big as we could go. So my very first learning of using a home embroidery machine, because apparently I forgot about my stabilizer world from what I did at the commercial embroidery store, was I pulled it out, plugged it in, and guess what the first thing I was gonna embroider? My name, of course, you probably did the same. So I hooped up my fabric and I stretched the fabric. Got it really, really tight, that's what she told me to do. And then she goes, oh, just take one of those pieces of stabilizer there and just slide it underneath. So I did just that. Then I freaked out because I realized that she forgot the foot control. And she really did. She goes, no, no, no. Remember, there's just a button. There's no foot control. You just push the button on the front to start the machine. After that, I haven't stopped embroidering. But there was a problem when I was done stitching my name. I took it out of the hoop. I thought it looked amazing. But what the problem was is that my fabric was puckered all the way around my name. <laughs> and it looked awful. It, looking at it now, I'm sure it would not pass my test at all, of course, because number one, I didn't hoop my stabilizer with my fabric, and I'd also stretched my fabric. At that point, I realized there was still a lot to learn with embroidery to get a nice, flat, good-looking result. 
At that point, I was on the track of loving the sewing world, working at sewing machine stores, learning to sell embroidery machines, and then my life allowed me to apply to work for Burning of America, and I became one of their educators for quite a few years and got to travel and teach other store owners how to use these new embroidery machines and the biggest thing, teach them about Stabilizer. Stabilizer, how to digitize. We had digitizing software that they could get um, or sell to their customers. Just the whole world of embroidery. There was so much that we can learn and do. That journey turned into a job offering from Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. So if you hear the acronym OESD, that is that particular company. At that time, I was also engaged to marry my dear husband, Steve, who also got hired to work at Oklahoma Embroidery as tech support. So not the funnest job <laughs> in the world where I had the fun like educator part and he had to take care of all the problems. So it was, but that was his field and he did very well uh, helping the company get better and better at supporting all this brand new technology for consumers. So working for Oklahoma Embroidery allowed me to focus completely on embroidery. It was learning and helping people understand stabilizers, the right stabilizer for the fabric they're working on. And also that there was a difference uh, in quality embroidery designs. And they are one company that still today produces one of the best stitched out designs. Very little thread jumps, a very wonderfully detailed designs that look lifelike. There's an art to that. And not every digitizer has that artist ability in them. And Oklahoma Embroidery's designs, their complete library, are just beautiful pieces of art. And there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of designs for you to pick from. So after that, uh, working there for a handful of years, that is when Steve and I came back to South Dakota and joined his parents' store, Heirloom Creations, where we have been there ever since. Online classes became a thing, and so did YouTube, and I became an educator online, doing a handful of online courses, such as our Embroidery Essentials online course, which is our highest enrollment course that we have in our course library. But this course, Machine Embroidery 101, is designed for me to give you everything that I have learned, everything that I teach on a regular basis at our store, in all those years of learning embroidery machines and helping people, people be successful, and putting it all in one place. If you're tired of going here to get information or going here, it is now all in one place for you to reference as many times as you need. And there's information that as you hear it first, you, you hear it, but you don't apply it. And so we forget. And after that, if you watch these videos again, which we highly recommend re-watching some of those lessons from time to time, refresh your memory, pick up tips that I said that you missed the first time or you heard but didn't use, and now you'll be ready to use them. So this course is very complete and it is everything that I have ever learned with, for working with any brand of embroidery machine. This is a course that you will come back to year after year to rewatch. So I'm excited to be part of the beginning of your embroidery journey. And I'd love to hear any of your questions that you have along the way. So feel free to email us or reach out on Facebook in the Facebook group.